O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida, where we welcome you to ESPN Journey to the Tourney. Tonight, the battle for first place in the SEC as a rivalry started in 1927 continues next. Out of rivalries comes written history of epic battles and legendary feats Are you kidding me? during Rivalry Week. It is Super Tuesday, and it's the SEC on ESPN. Our matchup of Battle of Top 25s. The defending national champions are back in the rankings at number 25 against the seventh ranked Gators of Florida who have not lost on their home floor this year, 11 and 0. As you take a look at the SEC standings, Florida just a one game lead now. They were rolling along until last Super Tuesday when they lost to Arkansas. They battled back to win over the weekend. Kentucky now has put a winning streak together. There you have it. The battle for the top spot is at hand. And from the rowdy reptiles at the Odome, to my Rowdy Hall of Fame partner, Dick Vitale. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Dick, when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year and you look at the back half of the SEC schedule in mid-February, you say, maybe this is for first place. It is tonight. Well, you know, you look at Kentucky. They had a quality win. You did the game over Mississippi. But they're really looking for that signature win, that special big W. And tonight's an opportunity to get one. John Calabari's kids better handle the ball against pressure, and they better defend the three because it's you said, Brad, this club is unblemished on this floor, and they have dominating teams on this floor. You mentioned the three. We take a look at the one-on-one. -on -one. It's a team that relies on what goes on in the paint, and one that doesn't necessarily. Well, you talk about Kentucky, it starts when you talk about the human eraser. Noel, the best shot blocker in America, has phenomenal timing. He can also rebound the ignite their transition game. And he's a vital part of their club. On the other side, you got the three ball. You got Boynton. You got Rosario. And Murphy can flat out shoot it to the tune of the best percentage in the conference. They've averaged 11 threes made the last five games. Here's the Florida lineup for Billy Donovan. Wilbekin's back in the lineup after not getting a start over the weekend with Boynton and Rosario and the three guard offense. Murphy and Patrick Young are up front. For the visiting Wildcats of John Calipari. Arrow, Goodwin, and Mays in the backcourt. Poitras and Nerlens Noel up front. Three freshmen in that starting lineup. Before we tip, we check in third member of our team, Shannon Spade. Shannon. Well, Brad, what a week it's been for the Florida Gators. They had that tough loss to Arkansas on the road. They also lost one of their key players in Will Yaget for the rest of the regular season. Still, Billy Donovan told me his team is used to dealing with adversity. The biggest challenge for his guys is more of the mental grind that you experience at this time of the season. Now, it's impossible to ignore the magnitude of the game and just how valuable a win here tonight would be for the Florida Gators. Still, Donovan told me the biggest test for his players will be after 40 minutes of ball here tonight. Win or lose, it's how they move forward and respond. Billy Donovan trying to win 20 games for the 15th straight year. And John Calipari, defending national champs. He's got the loose look last few games without the tie. And both teams and both coaches talked to us today about being almost more psychologists at this part of the season than coaches. Ed Corbett, Michael Roberts, and Tony Green's got the ball in hand. We're set from the Odome for the battle for first place in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, Brad, the one difference we hope in this Kentucky team, they don't have the three veterans that they had last year that they can build around in Jones, Lamb, and certainly Miller. This club, it's all about the young kids. Here's Wilbekin, as I mentioned, back in the starting lineup. Billy Donovan didn't like his intensity last week during the game or in practice, but he earned his way back in with seven assists in the win over the weekend over Mississippi State. You got a veteran team that went to the Elite, the elite Eight last year, so they've been around, they can play. Murphy's been very effective. Rosario, baseline jumper. Rebound loose out to Kentucky and Porters. Focus is going to have to be aggressive. He has a tendency to be a little passive on the floor. Good one. The leading scorer for Kentucky, but certainly hasn't been in recent games. Most of those points came earlier in the season. Struggling shooting the ball. One for 20 from the three in his last 11 games. Here's Porthos inside against Murphy with a one-hand hook. Rims out Rosario with a rebound. And Wilbergen pushes it to Boynton. Boynton trying to kick it outside, and that wasn't a shot, but it's still a block. Well. 
I'll tell you, he's got such a wingspan. He's the best shot blocker I've seen. I know Davis was terrific. Davis had ability to go get the three-point shooter, but this kid is so quick inside with his timing. He's uncanny right now. 103 blocks coming in to the game tonight. On pace for about 150. I mean, I'll tell you, Davis is much more complete than him. Right. Offensively, Noel is nowhere near what Davis was. Here he is down low, and he's fouled. I think he's got to be a little effective inside. At least catch the ball, have that quick bounce to jam. You got to put some points on the board in that hole. Young picks up the foul deck, and that's something that can't happen to Florida. They're going to be in a heap of trouble. That's a good point you make. The reason you make that statement is they're so limited on the front court. When you get out of the game, as Shannon said, they really are limited in size. Noel, not a good free throw shooter. Four times he's been freshman of the week in the SEC, back to back to back to back weeks. No one's ever done it five times. <laughs> he might be on, on pace. He's got the first part of the ball game. That's it. What, he has a great game here. He'll be on pace. You're not kidding. Tough place to play. Pack house at O'Connell Center. That is close to last five times, which Don Calipari's can take him six. Kenny Boynton started the season in a terrible slump, worked his way out of it, and now the last couple games has been a little bit iffy from the outside again. Got a really fine perimeter defense, vital. You better defend the three ball against Florida. Okay. Here's a guy that can shoot it. He can shoot it. It was a tough catch. He had trouble with the pass, and I don't think he got a clean look. He didn't get any rhythm. And a foul. The Poitras scores over Murphy. There's a transition game. Before the game, I'm in the locker room with Billy Donovan. He writes on the board, transition defense. Transition. And here it is right there. Great job by Kentucky getting the ball out in transition. Alex Porthers, freshman. Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee. Last year, he's got a three-point play. And it's a four-point Kentucky lead to start things off. Year. Kentucky won all three meetings against Florida. The closest one was a three-point game in the SEC tournament semifinals. Here's Young. Try to back in and lost the handle. And Kentucky's got numbers. And good one. Has it rejected by Young. Great job coming over by Young. The last shot. Nice hustle to get back. Interesting in a locker room before the game. Billy was demonstrating. He told Young, he said, unless you feel contact, with your body against Noel, don't shoot the ball. Because if there's space, he'll have the angle to block the shot. What a great block right there by Young. 39th of the season by Patrick Young, which is a personal high. He looks like a football player, man. Boy. He looks like a must champ. You <laughs> use him as a, a tight end. No what doubt. a tight end body he has. Oh, Noel is right open. He's they asking for him. it, too. They missed him on the box. Back outside to Mays. As they work the parameter 10 on the shot clock. They shooting the ball a little better than he did. Went through a real streak where he had a tough time trying to shot the ball. Oh, what a shoot. Good one's going to have to take it. On the inside. Back in. Up in the air. And he picks up the foul. He's out of control at times. And there's another example. Flying up in the air. That's something that really bothers John Calipari. He's suddenly talented. He's a slasher. He's a driver. But that's totally out of control. How he's ready for the NBA and point for us. Forget it. And Willie Crowley style. I cannot believe that they're charted to be lottery selection. I'm potential. I guess. Murphy tips twice. And now no way. I think he keeps playing this game. He'll be a guy on the bench by the Wilson. Dangerous guy off the bench. And traveling violation. So back-to-back -back turnovers by Kentucky. Unable to add to their 4-0 lead. Kyle Wiltshire, the sophomore Dick's talking about. One of the excellent three-point shooters in the conference as well. Averaging about 12 points a game. There he is. He's second to Murphy. Two best. We have the two best three-point shooters here today. And they're both 6'10". He's up four screens. Step away from the ball screen. There we go. Great execution. You better get over the top, man, or you're going to switch, whatever you decide. But you better find the guy that steps back. Murphy, just under 50% outside the three. And right on cue, as Dick's talking about him, he makes it a one-point game. Well, did he run over? He 
block before he ran him over. It is a foul on Noel as we go to break. Kentucky leading by one early. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. The swamp to the left. And the O-Dome in the middle. And right now, it's already becoming physical in the first four minutes. As Shannon said, Eric Murphy's got a mouse under his left eye, courtesy of Nerlens Noel's left elbow right about there. Wow. Certainly accidental. That was yep. in the no doubt about it. Three turnovers in a row in the last three possessions by Kentucky. You know what's really amazing? Kentucky this year has turned the ball over three and a four times, and they've only forced 291 turnovers. So their pressure defense has not really created any kind of havoc. Murphy in there after they worked on the eye. Dick mentioned three straight turnovers, two on offensive fouls against the Wildcats, one on Noel and one on Goodwin. Good one Goodwin matched up with Riverton. Is it a good handler? Nice to get the paint and kick it out. Rosario found an avenue. Nobody rotated it over. What an unbelievable gap. Rosario from out of St. Anthony's. Oh, here comes the pressure. Here comes the traps. Dick, they pull Noel away from the basket, and that's how Rosario got the bucket. And now Boynton in transition, tried to score, lost the handle, keeps it alive. Rosario three. Got it. There goes the three ball, baby. The three ball. Take the turnover. Up the floor we go. The three ball. A quick T.O. by Calabari. Eight four on an eight zero run are the Gators here, and in transition off another Kentucky turnover. Point Rosario is thirty fifth triple of the year, and just like that. Florida goes from being down to being up four. They're such a spur team. You know, it's such an unbelievable luxury when you got so many players that are capable of making that three. It just gives you so much momentum. 195 threes on the year for Florida right now. Lead the SEC. SEC competition over the Metro Park. Both number and in percentage. Eric. Wilson in the lineup for the first time. He's in some trouble right now in the backcourt. Don't want to pick up that dribble. I'm going to go diagonal. Poitras over everybody. Trying to tip in his own miss. He'll get a second chance, and Noel is going to make sure. I think there's no doubt about that. I mean, that's Flush City. you got to attack that pressure. You don't want to be passive against it. You want to bring the ball diagonally, get it away from the trap. Wilbur can try to bounce pass in those long arms of Noel. Just swiped it away. Here's Wilson with two minutes. Wilcher walked with it. That is four turnovers in the last five trips for Kentucky. Tough to win when you do that. Wilcher right now, they go right up in his face. They know that he's a three-point shooter. I mean, right here, you're going to see here, Noel with the offensive rebound. Comes off the weak side with the jam. Good timing. We know he can shoot those, but if he ever develops an offensive game, mid-range jumper, he's going to be really dangerous. Plus, being able to hit his free throws with him. Is that big ball screen. The screen of each other's most dangerous guy. He's stuck in the back of that screen. On the baseline. High up over the rail goes Casey Gray. That's where you got to put it if you're going to get it over those long arms. It's that one thing. He gives them energy. He's also a key vital part of their pressure. Athletic. That's what he used to get out of you. Get to He you plays see. more minutes because you get down until, as Shannon said, into the regular season. You can see the pride they have defensively. All five guys really scrap it, play it as a unit, not just individually. They didn't play like this last week on Super Tuesday, but they are tonight. Against Arkansas, the Razorbacks started off so hot, and Florida never got back into it. Tonight, it's a different story. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. Wisconsin and Minnesota. Gophers started off hot. They're slipping right now. Wisconsin always dangerous, and then the Big East. It's the Red Storm. And the Cardinals, Wisconsin, Minnesota at 7, St. John's Duke at 9, Thursday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. When I sent our sympathy out to our buddy Steve Lavin, his dad passed away. And Steve, we sent our sympathy out to our close you over to your dad. 
See, Richard, he's not going to get any opportunity and got quickly to shoot that three. You didn't score it over to get the ball that low. Point was, was that low, but I think he didn't realize where he was in conjunction with the basket and missed rather badly from that close. What a veteran basketball team. A lot of experience. Point way up high. It was tipped by Noel. Just enough to change the trajectory on the ball. Paulson for three. Hey, he's given him some quality minutes. The last game, he played really well. Had a big-time performance against Maryland earlier this year. A junior out of Nicholsville, Kentucky. He didn't play at all. Or very limited a year ago. But he has given him quality minutes. I love kids like that. Look at a mismatch inside that. They got a total mismatch. Paulson. Paulson and Murphy. Yes, sir. And they switch up on top. I love kids that just take the challenge, practice every day. I it. Double the drill. Merlin's Noel tonight. That one, a pass that was rejected, tipped away. He's also leads the team in steals, a couple of them, and then watch this, just enough to change the basketball strike. You had the game, you and Jimmy, and you had that game with Mississippi when he came in with four fouls. I said that is the best I've ever seen anybody play in my 34 years with four fouls. I think he had eight of his 12 blocks after he had four fouls. A dozen block shots. And everyone was needed because Mississippi made an incredible run. They were down 17. Here are the Gators by one. Inside, the bounce pass. Good one stuffs it, and Kentucky's back in front. That was a great look right there by Willie Corley Stein. Last oh. two games, he's averaged 12 points a game. After having his knee worked on, just a few games. Back in there, and he's a huge presence as well at seven feet. And that size should be a difference maker for them tonight. Their size versus Florida size on the inside. Left hand hook, not a bad shot by Young. Murphy trying to clean up and got a foul, I think, before the shot. Let's wait and see. Eleven fifty-six remaining first half. Kentucky on the road, leading by one. Take a look who's up on top of the Big Ten. <laughs> Tom Izzo is an unbelievable worker and a winner. I can't wait for next Tuesday. I'm going to be working with Magic Johnson up by Tariqa. But I'm going to tell Magic right now. The reason I'm there is to make sure he doesn't see just green. <laughs> green, green, green. You better see some red and white. <laughs> It's Indiana, Michigan State. Eric Murphy, maybe just joining us, took an elbow, inadvertent elbow from Merlin Snowell under the left eye. That's one of the reasons for the, the band aid. Four points for Eric. Shooting just under 50% from outside the arc. Phenomenal. Listen to this, Brad. Unbelievable. Last five games, he's 25 for 38. 25 for 38, shooting the basketball. That's pretty good. His brother, by the way, plays for Duke. Yep. I'll be there tomorrow with Jay Billis and Dan Schilman. That'll be the orchestra leader. Charlie Stein trying to back in. Nice defense by Young. He was a wide receiver. He was a wide yeah. receiver. You got to throw the ball up high to it. In about nine games, he caught 52 balls for about 1,200 yards. <laughs> he would be a big target. He's smart, though. Get away from all that pound and play basketball. Go, go, go. Oh, he oh, the oh, 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 oh. turned his ankle. And he gets up. I guess he's okay. He lost the starting jump. He goes to practice. Didn't break the start. I thought maybe he'll pull a nice little couple of feet side. Nice bounce pass by Rosario. An easy deuce for Patrick Young. Yeah, Young gets an easy deuce to a drive draw. I thought maybe he'd pull an hour and I was just what? It's practice. Practice. What's <laughs> practice. the big deal? It's practice. <laughs> big screen. Rosario goes down hard and a three-pointer in and out for Harold. And Young with a rebound. They got to get some points out of Harold. He's played a lot better at the point. Got to stay in front of him. Go out to beat you. Then create an opportunity inside. Real good. High up and in. Nice play. They're getting into that lane a little too easy right now. Kentucky's got to do a better job and stay in front of the dribbler. Almost a midway point and a half and the biggest lead of the night for the Gators. Up five. They've got two spurts. 
An 8 0 run after they were down 4 0, and now another Spurks put them in front 16 to 11. Holly Stein, and he walks. Good job defensively by Murphy. Staying between him and the basket. Prather back out there with Boynton, Murphy, Frazier, and Rosario for Billy Donovan. You know, John told me before the game, he said, this game is like a measurement stick, an evaluation. We won five in a row, but here you get a little deficit in the meaning of how you progress. As we said, not only a tough place to play, but a place where the games are perfect this year. Murphy, hook shot, and again, he altered his shot just because number three was in his... And his windshield. Great play right there, Brad. He definitely hesitated. He hesitated. He was anticipating the while the road trade over. I'm going to try to find some looks for worship. But they're right up in his face. Noel holding his right elbow after that. On the other end. They're going to play for right now defensively playing Wiltshire. Here's where Noel might have hurt his elbow battling. Well, they got tangled up, but he was doing the dozy doe there with Casey Prather. And then. Grabbed his right elbow after he got rid of the rebound. See that right? That don't give him a chance to shoot the basketball. He's got to get free off the screen. Wiltshire. Kicks out. Wiltshire goes right back to him. Noel's hook shot is short. And out of bounds. Still be Kentucky ball. Kentucky certainly has played better recently, winning five in a row. Good one on the baseline. And he had it stuffed by Murphy inside. We'll try it again. This one it goes. That's his game. Driving the slash in. Perimeter game is certainly suspect. One for 20 in the last 11 games. He's a talented athlete. Kentucky trying to do a good job plugging off three. Oh, well, the Kenny Boyd just took a shot yet, has he? Got it right up in his face. Frazier, kick out, baseline jumper, three to that. I tell you, guys like Frazier come off the bench, give him such a lift. They go immediately to their trap with him after a score. You don't want to pick that dribble up. Frazier coming off a season high 12 points for the win over Mississippi State. They needed him because if you get being on the bench, and they needed more minutes out of him. He's been battling a high ankle sprain for about a month, and coach just said, hey, we need you, man. And he's come through for him the last two games. It'll be a foul call on the inside, I think, on Murphy. No one got a little nervous there. He thought Ed Corbett was calling him. It was on Murphy. That's Murphy's second. See, ball down on the post. See, here's where he's limited. He has really got to work and dedicate himself as you said earlier, big man moves inside. He's capable. He's a good attitude. He's a good kid. His family has two brothers playing football. Might not see him for a while now. There are two fouls at the eight minute mark. Here's Wiltshire. And Wiltshire off the glass with his first basket. He's got a touch. He can score. They need somebody to score, and he's a guy that can put points on the board for them. So the woman can got to stay in front of him. You can't let him make the turn on you to give numbers. Oh, they missed the post inside. Yeah, they know it. And now Wilberton takes it inside. Up off the window. He's beating him too easy off the bounce, Brad. He's beating him, getting, making a turn. And there's a trap. There's a trap. right there. On Polson. Almost gave it up. Got it to Perthus. Blocked by Young. They missed Wiltshire wide open, standing alone at the three-point line. Five-point lead. Looking to add to it. Prater. Got his own miss and score. I like him. Casey Braver is an energy guy. He's a guy that gets the engine run. Look at the Roddy Ruptos. They're going bananas now. Here comes the press. John Calipari oh. trying to wait for the TV timeout. He's getting it now, but it's another turnover. He tried to throw it to you. He got you a point. 7 6 remaining. First half. Florida, its biggest lead, up seven. Billy Donovan talking with Shannon coming out of this timeout. Seven to go, first half, and Shannon talked to Billy Donovan moments ago.
Coach, you guys were able to open the game with an 8-0 run. How did that momentum shape the first 12 minutes for you? Well, I think anytime you can get some stops, and we made we made two threes, you know, in that period. Rosara made one and Murphy made one. So we got to do a better job when we're getting in the lane. Obviously, uh, New Orleans Noel is a great shot blocker, but we're not forcing shots. We've got to make better decisions once we get in there. You mentioned some defensive slippage this week. What level are you guys playing at right now? I think our guys are playing hard. I think they're really trying. I think they're doing a good job so far, but it's a long game. We've got a lot of time to play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Dick, coming in, Florida holding opponents to 37% from the floor, which is eighth best in the country. Right now, Kentucky shooting 37 and a half. Well, you know, the one thing also, Kentucky, if they have a strength, is the fact they hold teams as well, about 39%. You know what's amazing? They had a 10-game winning streak until they ran to the bus saw, which you did the game in Arkansas. And in that 10-game winning streak, the closest game was a 14-point win over right. Mississippi. They were dominating people. They've won all their games at home by double figures this year. Right now, they got a seven-point lead with seven to go, first half. And even my buddy, by the way, said to Phillips, he said, hey, I'm watching Florida dominate. MIT, they're going to win it all. They're going to win it all. And then Arkansas, bam, makes 15 out of 20 shots to start the game. I think that winning it all is open to debate for just about 50 teams right now. I'd say it's wide open. It's been great March Madness. Nine on the shot clock. As Wilbekin's got it on top, and he found an avenue to take a jumper from the elbow. He should have gone to the goal. He had a wide open drive yep, for the basket. He was waiting to see where number three was going to be. Yeah. He does that to you. Psychologically, Absolutely. he creates an unbelievable dilemma. I think for Kentucky to win this game, Harrell's going to have to play well. The speed of the game with the backcourt, I think, was a little bit too much for Paulson when he was in there with the traps. And I think Harrell, who's a skilled player, has to really rise to the occasion here. Wilbekin having trouble. Did get it into Boynton. By the way, after that miss, it was a fresh shot clock for Florida. And now, foul on the inside on Noel. That's his second. Florida, first four minutes, couldn't do anything. Next four minutes, couldn't miss. Back to a cold spot, and then five and eight since. So it's been a roller coaster offensively so far for the Gators tonight. Noel's going to sit now with two fouls. Murphy's got two fouls for Florida, and we got 626 from getting in the half. Well, don't get me started about that because I think the other day it should be a lot. I think that we have referees quick with those whistles, and the stars end up on the sideline. I almost believe they should be allowed to play the kids. It's the only sport where you penalize, and if he gets a sixth foul, then it's two shots in the board. Especially if you're going to do five overtime games like you did over the weekend. You want as many guys out there that you recognize as possible. <laughs> Whoa, and that's Younger Boynton. I don't know who got it, but it got sent all the way back out near midcourt. Great defensive recovery by Florida. I'm telling you, they're a tenacious defensive team. As a star, you work all week with them, and a ref's whistle puts them on the sideline. And it was Young, although Boynton was there. So, Young... Blocking Noel three to one right now. Tell you, Young's had himself a really solid year this year. Much improved from last year. They're gonna get some looks for days as well. He's capable of making a three. Mays hasn't taken a shot yet. Boynton on the other hand for Florida has taken one. And Wilbekin just stole the ball. Shot clock expired, I think, right when he was in the process of stealing it. Hey, their defense is really unbelievable. The way they get after it as a unit. Pressure the basketball, they scrap, they claw, and they play at another level on this floor. And that's why they're unblemished 11 and zip here. Kentucky, nine turnovers, Dick. Yep. Average 13 for the year. That's their young dorms. Young sets a pick for Boynton. He sets up. Yes, he does. A 250 pound pick. Wilbekin, three. Got it. That's big, boy. They make those threes. Maybe the lights out. They're capable of blowing you away. We got to be very careful right now, Kentucky. And Young almost came up with another steal. That so we mentioned so tenacious. We mentioned beating teams by double figures at home. It's a double figure lead with five to go in the first half, courtesy of this jumper by Scotty Wilbekin. Got a very good little coach right now with Ryan Howell on the sideline. 
All I can simply say to people, you better have your little fun with Kentucky now. Because when the Harrison kids arrive, and Young arrives, and Lee arrives, and Johnson arrives, and if they get you know, Randall and recruiting, they recruited Wiggins, it is going to be a dynamite team next year. Five of the recruits are potentially five of the Kentucky recruits were just named today with the Jordan Grand All-Star Classic. They only have so many guys, and they've got five of them. And Mays still, hits his first basket. And they're still recruiting two big-time players. And he gets it right. Rosario for three. Can't let them shoot the open three. That was the big thing. John Calabari spent on a phone with me about defending the three wide open. Gets the pass the down. Holly Stein. Good look right there by Kayfish. Good look. Right over the top of the defense. Momentarily quiets the Odom crowd with four minutes to play in the first half. There is nothing like great guard play. If you're solid on a perimeter, you got a chance every night to win. And he got the three. They are solid on a perimeter. Hey, Gordon says, you can do it what we did. You can do it, Rosario. I can do it. John Calipari obviously not happy with his perimeter defense right now. And they're going to have a foul. On Rosario. But a timeout with 342 remaining. The biggest lead of the ball game for the Gators. John Calipari and Shannon will get together for a chat. I don't think he's going to be happy when we come back. On 7-0 this time after an 8-0 run earlier. They lead by 12, 31 to 19 over Kentucky, and they're hitting the threes. That's right. You know, you talk about the three ball, five for six. We got a guy in the studio who can hit the three ball at Jay Williams, and he knows how Shannon, important that let's, is. Let's check in with Shannon. Coach, you knew this was going to be an enormous challenge for your players. A lot of emotion in that huddle just now. What'd you say to them? Oh, uh, we got a couple guys that are playing timid. Um, and they, we don't have enough guys when two or three are playing timid. But the biggest thing is we were guarding the three-point line. We just gave them four threes. The guy just didn't talk, so those kind of things. Thanks, Coach. There you have it. That's exactly what we were talking about. I'll tell you one thing, it's a little like it is. He's talking about timid. I think they're a little bit, you know, intimidated with the whole environment. This is a real test for these young kids. I know they face hostile environments wherever they go, but this place is unique. Not only is it a hostile environment, there's talent on the floor. Absolutely. Real talent. Not defending the three and having nine turnovers has led to a 12-point deficit here. Holly Stein against Young, and Young just cuts him off at the pass. Great defense by Patrick Young. Yeah, very physical. Never allowed him to make the turn. What is a plus nine to Prather on the floor? Watch this defense by Patrick yeah, Young. Yeah, here's Patrick Young right now. He's going to beat him in the spot. He's not going to let up turn. He picked up his dribble. Tough shot right there. He's a man, man. He's become a man. Scotty Wilberkin, who came here as a young man, very young, graduated from high school early from the Rock High School right here in Gainesville, was 16 years old when he was on the court for the first time. And now here he is, a junior. And he's still only 19. I will say this stuff. He may be 19, he's young, but he better learn. There is no reason whatsoever that a coach should not start you because you did not come to practice for on two days. Playing for a nasty right team, that's inexcusable and not acceptable. I think he got the message. I think so too. So Playing very well tonight after a good outing against Mississippi State over the weekend as well. He's playing very hard, I can tell you that. Yep. Look at get over that screen. Kentucky's in a big hole here with 2.40 to play in a half. Bobby Stein, left hand, hook. Somehow got the rebound over Boynton. And tried to feed the post and a foul. And I see who this one's going to be. They're out of rhythm. Well, offensively, they have no rhythm at all, Brad. Foul is on Michael Frazier. Wednesday Night Hoops, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wednesdays, Syracuse and UConn at 7, and Duke, and North Carolina Dick will be there, along with Jay Phyllis and Dan Schulman, 9 o'clock tomorrow night on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Hope those guys give me a few words to say. Okay. I mean, you think they will? <laughs> think Dan and Jay's going to allow me to say anything? I doubt if you got a shot at all. <laughs>
See, right now, they're going to get a little rhythm more pressure. They've had no rhythm because the trap's going to come. There's been no outside shooting at all except Paulson, of all people who hit a three. And then your dribble's a no-no. Again, great defense by the Gators. Not getting on the shot. shot. Not getting on the movement. Probably Stein with a drive. And he runs over Young. Out of control. They have absolutely no rhythm. To have a good offense, you have to have ball movement and player movement. And both are non-existent. Again, here's Stein just says, okay, I'm going to bump my way in. Young maybe with a little bit of an acting job, but nonetheless, he took a pretty good shot. And the foul on Carly Stein and another Kentucky turnover. Well, he beat him to the spot. I was on radio yesterday, Kentucky Sports Radio. They taped it yesterday. They played it today with Matt Jones, who does a terrific job. And we talked about their young guards. We talked about the fact that for them to have a chance, their guards are going to have to play well. You're not going to beat Florida unless your guards play well against them. In a game you have with Arkansas, those guards are making shots. Yep. That's a guy coming off the bench. What energy. John Calipari is 57 himself, man. I'm not sure what was better, the assist or the jam on that last play by Florida. I think it was a combination of both. Great team play. They're smiling. They feel it. They got that fever. Look at Casey Prather. Prather says, hey, give me some PT, Coach Donovan. How about the pass? The pass was good. Look. Here's another look. Wilbekin behind the back. And Prater says, I'm finishing over everybody, including the seven footer. I think you like that behind the back little look. Okay, that, cute. That, that was cute. I think you like his hair too. too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I hair gotta though. do that to my hair. I like that uh, hair. You, you I have, have no, no chance. Hair. I got no hair to do it. <laughs> I just like anybody's hair too. <laughs> Kentucky to me the rocks a stabilizer. If they could have had a veteran player come back from last year, all this young, good talent, but they just don't have a stabilizer on the perimeter to get them to execute and do what they want. Oh, look at that thing, showtime. Got to be in the top 10 nomination for best plays on Sports Center later tonight. Guaranteed that'll be on Sports Center. That cuts the lead to 14. Kentucky almost came up with a steal. Instead, 50-50 ball. Rosario finds the handle and scores. Getting too many easy shots. Florida has what every coach wants. Balance. Good inside, outside action. Another block by Prather, but the stick back is good by Crawley Stein. I tell you, Crawley Stein, he stays in school. His game is going to get better and better rather than sitting on a pine in the NBA. One minute. Remaining first half for Lyoto. Arrow gets it ahead, leaves, and now Wilcher, a straight look at a three. Got it. Finally gets an open look. I mean, that's like a layup for him if he could square his body and get an open look. So that three comes with 51 seconds remaining in the first half, and it's a 36 25 game. A crazy place for oh, basketball as we have to uh, turn around here where the Rowdy Reptiles are. Brad Nessler with Dick Vitale, Janet Spake. Great run so far by Florida, but I think their defense has really been the uh, difference in the ball game. Yeah, they've done, a, they've done a great job defensively in making the threes. That one run where they made like four threes was really unbelievably lethal. But on the other side, that was a big three by certainly Wiltshire. Right now, you're hoping you can go in at halftime with a deficit in single digits. All right, if it looks like Dick and I are ready for Dancing with the Stars, we have about this much space to work with. <laughs> Dick is ready for Dancing with the Stars. Now we'll sit back down. Good job, partner. Okay, buddy. That's your best shot, the back <laughs> of your head. Show my ball dome. The Vital Ball Dome Index the says. The BDI. Yes, sir. Uh, watch out for the Gators. There's no well sitting on a pine. I just hate it that two quick whistles, the star goes to the sideline. I thought they had shooting the other day. The Vital theory is we should let what other sport does a star go to the sideline? Not baseball, not in football, but here a referee blows the whistle and a kid sits on the sideline. Patrick Young inside, draws a foul from Cauley Stein. 
And that's two on Colley Stein. Speaking of VBDI, Richard's tweets. Oh, it's one of my tweets. There's yeah. your top five. Huh? Indiana, Miami, Duke, Florida, and Gonzaga. Yeah, those are my five that I submitted this week in terms of the top five. Florida went down to seven after losing to, uh, I thought that was too much punishment for the ball. Off the glass back there. I sent a tweet out with your picture on. Twitter slash Dickie V. You better follow me. You better get on Twitter. We got to get you on Twitter. No, 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 I'm going to no. get Shannon to get you on Twitter. I don't think so. You don't want to do it, huh? I don't want to do that. <laughs> Poitras comes in as Patrick Young. I don't think called that off the window. And Noel and Cauley Stein, each with two fouls sitting on the bench, talking about their situation. That time, Patrick had perfect touch. Four points for Young. And he goes out. They don't want him to get a cheap foul with 38 and a half seconds remaining. And they lose these senior guards next year. They got some great players coming in. Casey Hill and Chris Walker. People are going to love those players. Final 30 seconds, first half. Good in the lineup. Has to give it back to Harrow. Poitras has a height advantage there, but lost the ball. Much more this. Too many turnovers. And now Florida can play for the last shot with a 13-point lead. Total command. Total command. After the first minute, it's been all Florida. Point and one ball. Poitras pins it against the glass. No further damage done before they head to the locker room. The Gators have only lost once this year when they lead at halftime. Not only do they lead at halftime, they lead in double digits again. We've had some magical moments in this game in its 127th matchup in the rivalry. How about Scotty Wilbur? The to Casey down. Prather, the throwdown over a seven-footer and a 38-25 halftime lead. We go to the UPS halftime report. Here's Steve and the guys. To start the second half from the Florida Gators on their home floor where they're perfect this year. Again, a double-digit lead, 38-25. Welcome back, Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. Partner, an hour ago, you said the key was going to be the inside play of Kentucky, the three-point shooting of Florida. Florida's holding up their end right now. Yeah, really are. They've done a great job shooting the three. I thought Pratham was outstanding. Pratham was tremendous, and so was Wilbur And you can't forget Rosario put 10 quick points on a board. Well, there was uh, some problems for Kentucky, though, as some of their miscues. As we take a look at tonight's Lowe's Never Stop Improving Breakdown. They had too many breakdowns. They had 11 turnovers, and they only had 12 scoring possessions in the first half. That is not a good combination, and that's the reason they're down 38 to 25. So a good first half for the Gators. They've only lost one game this year when leading at the break. And as we start the second half, they're up 13. We'll see if Kentucky can put some offense together. That would have been a good start, and it will be a foul on Wilbekin as we check in with Shannon. Well, Brad, only three of the nine Kentucky players who have seen action here tonight have played a game here or been a part of a game here at the O-Dome and experienced the rowdy reptiles behind me firsthand. Now, coming out of the Gator locker room, Mike Rosario, who had 10 points in that first half, he led his team out. He said one thing, 20 more minutes. It's something that Billy Donovan stressed in that locker room. He told his players, you can't celebrate a basket too much. You got to stay in the moment, get focused, get back on defense, live in the moment. That tells you the maturity of Rosario over a year ago. He took a lot of bad shots right now. He's led them in scoring nine times this year, including, as Shannon said, in that first half with 10. And I'll tell you, the running reptiles certainly give you a lot of enthusiasm and energy, but they're not the problem for John Calipari. It's a bunch of guys named Wolby King, Prather, Certainly Rosario, Patrick Young, don't forget the job he did. Young did a marvelous job of three blocks in the first half. He also set some great screens. Unbelievable with his body up there with those ball screens. Murphy trying to go up and under. He's going to leave it for Young. Young. Are you serious? Oh. Are you serious? He's got five points for that. I mean, Around. The baseline and around six foot ten of Merlin's Noel. That's a great shot to utilize in the game of horse. You know, I mean, <laughs> come on now. That was unbelievable. That was a pure Hail Mary, baby. Watch this move. Well, we took about up and under. This is more than an up and under. This degree of difficulty. How he was able to get that off is beyond me. 
Shows a little agility there for a big fella. Maybe he should be out dancing with the stars. Former <laughs> Gator was great at dancing with the stars. Emmett Smith. He shows a great agility and mobility. Aaron Andrews is pretty good. Aaron too, Andrews is pretty game. good too. Yeah. She was very good. Let's see what Kentucky now. The shot clock did not reset, so 15 to shoot. Noel. Young just blocks the path. He's so limited offensively. He really has so much to learn on the post. He got a little closer that time, but missed the hook shot, and Young will clear it off. He's going to be an effective player down there with a lot of coaching, a lot of teaching. Remember, he came to Kentucky with very, very little skills offensively. Young thought about going to the basket, gets it to Murphy instead. Murphy on the drive, rejected by Noel. He's not going to get that off from Mr. Noel there. He's a human eraser. The best of the best. Kentucky starters, they only have one more point in the first half than the bench did. The bench of Wiltshire, Polly Stein, and Paulson had almost as many points as a starting five. The real problem for Kentucky, you don't get a great opportunity to get a lot of quality wins because the SEC from top to bottom is not what it's been in the past. That's why well, they're looking it. for this one, and that makes it so much of importance tonight. Boynton with three on the shot clock, and Young keeps it alive. Fresh clock, Murphy's going to rifle it from long range. And now Noel with a rebound. Kentucky's going to get trying to get a spurt somehow. Good one. He's fouled on his way to the basket. That's going to be two this half on Wilberkin. That's his strength, driving the basketball. I mean, you're talking about strength, quality wins. You look at Kentucky, they got an opportunity with Missouri. They're going to be there for game day down there in Lexington. They have such passionate fans. In Missouri, that's who will be for Super Tuesday in Columbia next week. For a 9 o'clock Eastern tip. Florida really put the hurt on Missouri here. They had Phil Cressy, I think, is a heck of a point guard, forced him to 10 turnovers. Good one. Around everybody, but he missed the layup. And he hits the deck, and Florida's got numbers right now, at least temporarily. Boynton, Murphy, and then Noel stops that progress. So one thing I'm really impressed with Florida defensively and the way they share the basketball. So unselfish, always looking for one another. Baseline jumper. Rebounds loose. And out of bounds to Kentucky, says Mike Roberts. You know, you got talent for Kentucky, but you got experienced talent and winning talent for Florida. And that is a difference. Boynton, a senior who's closing in on 2,000 points. Wilbekin's a junior. Lazari is a redshirt senior. Murphy's a senior. And Patrick Young's a junior. You know, Lazari is the fact of an old course at Rutgers, which you have to do. He's over 1,000, too. Yep. Good one. He's got a little bit of trouble in the backcourt. Got through it all. Got it to Mays. The lob. Noel had Murphy in his way. Kentucky still has a chance. And now it's an offensive foul on Goodwin. Totally out of control. Brad, I said in the first half, and I'll say it again. And that's because you don't have a young stabilizer at the point. They have no rhythm offensively against this defensive dynamo of Florida. You gotta throw the lob up. If you can throw the lob, you gotta throw it up on top. John Calipari said at the shoot around today, if I could get my guard play to be better, I'd be a happier man. And so far tonight, the guard play hasn't been good. No, it's been enough. But I'll tell you one thing, I think that Goodwin really thinks too much on the floor. He's not playing loose. That guy can make plays. He's the best three-point shooter in the SEC. This has all been Gators, my friends. It's all been Gators. Biggest lead of the night for the Gators. The Rally Reptiles are chomping away with three minutes into the second half. And with Murphy's three, it's 43-26. Well, games that will impact the tournament. Journey to the tourney on ESPN Thursday night. Bulldogs look to improve their shot at the number one seed in the tourney while the Gales aim for a marquee victory against their conference rival. Gonzaga, St. Mary's, Thursday at 11 on ESPN2 and also live on Watch ESPN. Is this Mark Hughes' best team? I don't know. I've seen a lot of good ones. I'll tell you one thing. He's had some great ones. I love this team, though. I had him in a loss against Butler, and Butler was so tenacious that night defensively, but you could see the potential in that Gonzaga team. Very dangerous and certainly has a legitimate shot to go to the NCAA championship. It's going to be a good one on Thursday night. Yes, sir. Sam Harris can play, too. 
Prather all over Goodwin in the backcourt. Olsen's going to have to hurry or they're not going to get across the timeline. That was close. I tell you, they're relentless on defense. They are absolutely, they love playing D. They get after it. That must have been an amazing performance by the Hogs down there in the Roosevelt's. Yeah, it was. This looks like a totally different Florida team than I saw last oh. Tuesday. And they have a foul on Murphy. But you said, who, me? Is there ever a guy that commits a foul that says, you know, ref, you were right? Remember when guys used to raise their hands when they yeah. had the foul call? <laughs> That's a long time ago. A long time ago. Murphy goes out. Young comes back in. Here's another look at that last play. Noel and Murphy. And I don't know, I guess uh, the left elbow or maybe the hip check trying to get the rebound. I'm not you know, sure. What, what's really sad, he did what coaches want their kids Box to do. Out. Blocked out. Yeah. You never see a block out. He laid a bar, body on him and he got called for a foul. So next time he says, no, coach, I'm just turning and going to the rim. <laughs> and they'll get more fits and rebound and dunk. Let's see if Wiltshire can become a factor. Somebody offensively has got to come to life for Kentucky. Polson's going to try three. And Wiltshire battles to keep it alive. Nice hustle. Great effort by Wiltshire. His problem is getting free for shots. Has the ability to trying to get space for a shot. He's got a spot here. But he missed it. Prather did just enough to get a hand in his face. Wilbekin on the drive. And fouled by Paulson. 15-57 to play. 17-point Gator lead. Forty-three twenty-six rivalry week presented by Wendy's. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, in sight and lit up, officially known as the Swamp, the O Dome in the middle, McKeithen Stadium, the baseball field to the right of your screen. And speaking of the Swamp, Phil Muschamp recruiting, I'm sure on the phone. Yeah, I don't right. know, but he can't hear in the O Dome. He's probably calling <laughs> up another quarterback. I mean, what a recruiting class he has. I met John Haskins today, who did a great job in Guy Charger recruiting. Played at Stanford, played in the NFL. He's from Sarasota, played at Riverview High School. Florida, Ole Miss, Auburn, Alabama, probably the number one recruiting school again in the SEC. Everybody did well, it seems like. Boy, Alabama had some trouble today. Four players yeah, suspended. They did. Yep. You'll hear about that, more on that on Sports Center following our second game as Wilbekin. Knocks down the free throw, and he's got nine points on the night. Tell you one thing, he's a lot better than what I thought, too. I'm talking about offensively. I knew he's a scrapper defensively, handle the ball, but he's also a threat offensively. And that's why Florida has to be, if you had to rate the top backcourts in America, they have one of the super six backcourts. No doubt about that. Dick, I think if Kentucky doesn't make a push in the next five minutes, they might not have a push at them. They're down 19. Now they're 0 for 5, so far this half. Two turnovers, really struggling. Offensively can't get any rhythm. Mays has to give it up. Combination of defense by Florida and also the lack of really guard play. Really like guard play, Kentucky. Well, left hand hook shot, just line driving. It's only his second field goal. He plays hard, though. I'll give the kid one thing. He plays hard. You're going to start a team, you'd like to start it with a guy in the middle like that. that field goal, as Dick said. After that 0 for start, their first one of, of the second half, and it took them almost five minutes to get it. Martin short on the three, but it comes right back to Robertson. I just don't like his release. The boy that knows the score, drive a good defensive player. No, his release is on the way down, it seems like. He's almost like he's throwing it. He's got a lot of points in here, though. There's an easy. Look at the way they handle the ball. Always looking for one another. Very unselfish. Always looking to make the pass for the easier shot. Shot selection. That's why they shoot 50 percent. So efficient or offensively. Good one. Finger roll. There's his driving ability. High school level, he was able to beat people constantly, taking the ball to the goal. He's got to work on his skills, passing the ball. Rosario, that looked like a shot from last year, but. Willie Donovan's not going to have a heart attack over it because it came back to his team, but he is eyeing Rosario right now as he called a timeout. Yeah, he didn't like that three at all. 
What a job Billy D has done at this school in basketball since arriving. I mean, the two national titles. In fact, both schools in the last seven years, three national titles. Look at the look he's given Rosario right now. Well, he's the dean of SEC coaches, the longest tenured coach, and still one of the younger ones. 17 years, 405 wins only. Eight off Rupp and Dale Brown in SEC history. Ever won more games than that in the Southeastern Conference. You know, John Calipari, think about what he's done. It's been amazing. You look there in Kentucky, but here's the numbers. Back-to-back -back -back national championships, 06 and 07. 12 so NCAA special. tournaments, as I mentioned tonight, if they win and their 17-point lead with 14 minutes to play, it would be 15 straight years of 20 wins or more, and only Coach K and Jim Beheim have longer strings. Unbelievable. Jimmy Beheim's had 34 20-game win <laughs> seasons. Think about that, 34. Billy looks the same as when he played a problem. Yeah, he does. He looks the same. Well, he could shoot that jumper. 1987 was the start of the three-point shot, and he was phenomenal. In fact, went to the Final Four. Rick Pitino, one of two coaches to take three teams to the Final Four. The other one sitting on the sideline now for Kentucky. But the name was John Calipari. With UMass and Memphis before Kentucky's national championship. Whistle in the lane. Kentucky Power is one of the people of Ryan Harrow. Any way you want to cut, it's frustrating for John Calipari because he sees potential, he sees the talent level, and he just can't seem to get them to get into the flow and do some of the things he believes they can do. Exactly. Rosario with the free throw line. Ten points. Now 11. He doesn't miss from the free throw line. In fact, if he shot enough free throws, he'd be leading the SEC. He's a 91% free throw shooter, but he doesn't have enough shots to qualify. That's a strength of Florida in the backcourt. Their backcourt people can make free throws if the game is close. They haven't been many games close. They're blowing people away. That 10-game winning streak, the they, longest they had since 2009, the closest game, as I said earlier, was Mississippi, 14. They average beating their opponents by 21 and a half, or average margin, I should say, of scoring, and that is tops in the country. It makes the three. Got it. Great job of tapping the pressure there. Moved the ball diagonally, got it to the open man, and Mays finished it off with the three. Rosario on the drive, reverse finger roll, loose ball, picked up by Kentucky. They've got a three on one. Mays will do it himself. So five straight points for Julius Mays. Nice little drive by Mays right there. To come up with a conversion. But he's on that block. I mean, it's 14 points, but you got to start digging in defensively. Rosario and Boynton on top, and now Kenny Boynton found an avenue. Where was the help side? No one from the help side rotated over into the three-second area. Bobby Knight used to be such a disciple about that. Rotating all they give help. The most dangerous thing on the floor is the basketball. The most dangerous thing. Guys are staring up. People in the stands just are rotating over. Boynton only a second field goal, a big one, stretches it back to 16. And it takes a minute that Kentucky had going away. And now Noel is fouled by Casey Prather, his third. Here's what Dick was talking about with no help on that last basket. Take a look right here. He just goes straight to the goal. Nobody rotated over. I mean, I, nobody rotated over. See, somebody's got to come over there and close that angle off. You got to close that driving angle. You got to converge on the basketball. Closest guy was Mays, and he just backed away. He backed away. He backed away. Maryland's Noel one out of two at the free throw line tonight. I think it's very obvious at this time of the year, and I know the love and the passion and the pride that Kentucky fans have. They better face now reality. This is just a good basketball team, limited in many areas. To be very honest, last year was a great basketball team. Combination of great youth and also veterans like Jones, Lamb, and Miller. This team doesn't have that luxury. They started the season as they missed both free throws, ranked preseason number three. I don't know who's involved with those rankings, but they were a little bit crazy. They just worked their way back into the top 25 yesterday. I was wacky, and I was part of it. I'm going to tell you why. 
so much you believe. I knew you were wacky, but go ahead. No, you you believe so much in four guys, all McDonald's, all Americans. You've seen what John has done in the past. He's done a brilliant job with young players. But we didn't factor in the value of the veteran players, Miller, Lamb, and Jones. That's a major, major plus. All three are NBA players. Noel got another free throw because of a lane violation and connected on that last one, by the way. Kentucky win, top 100 wins. Ole Miss, Maryland, Texas, and Tennessee. They don't have a lot left, though, that they can do. They play Florida again the last game of the season. In Missouri. In Missouri. That's it. It's hard to improve your RPI in an off year for the SEC. That's a good one. Comes up with a jump shot. And Young on the other end. Nobody got back. Nobody was back defensively. He scored a basket. That's just really a lack of focus, concentration. 12 minutes to go in a 15-point game. You know, my buddy Reese Davis told me after doing a Florida game, he said they're special. He said they're special. There's something about them they can win it all. He's winning. Poitras short-armed that one on the inside as he got double teamed. 11.49 or a landing. We've got a timeout. Patrick Young running the floor so well, and he beat Noel to the hoop. All right, Steve, Seth, it's 53 to 38 here. Here's your top 10. Indiana holds on despite having lost one last week. Duke's back up to number two. How about Miami? I watched them over the weekend. They're pretty good. I have Miami against Duke. They were unbelievable. They're great backcourt. What they have again, like Florida, solid backcourt, one of the best around. Shane Larkin has become a star. He's one of the elite point guards right now in basketball, and Deron Scott. Then you factor in Kaji, who didn't get off the bench here at Florida. has been super. Now they got back Johnson in the middle. They got two fifth-year players and a six-year player. Mays missed a three. Young wins the battle for the rebound. Florida has three losses on the season. As you look at that top ten, Arizona and Kansas State are both in there. They lost to Arizona by one at Arizona and at Kansas State by six. Their only other loss last Tuesday at Arkansas. Young scores. Young getting the best of Noah on the inside. Yeah, he is. He's really doing a great job here tonight. That Arizona game lost to a good Arizona team who came back, but they really fought in the last two minutes for him. And that game won. Noel inside. And Erlen's Noel. Five in the second half, eight for the game. So he's going to get a few more touches. Around the basket, he's going to catch the ball and dunk. He slipped a little bit there, and by the time he regained his foot, Young had scored over it. And a foul. Young has really become a force on the interior, so he got strength on the interior. Perimeter players that can shoot the ball. He got great balance. I can see why Digger and Reese and all those guys love him. Sonowell slip a little bit, and all of a sudden he wasn't 6'10", and he's looking at the floor, and they're cleaning it up right now. So that slip cost him a foul and a bucket by Young. Most of all, the lead stays right up there, 17, mm -hmm. and potentially go to 18. They can't get a spurt to cut the lead, and that's because of the unbelievable consistency of Young. Well, now Murphy gets an offensive rebound in the lane, but had it stolen away from him. Sending a message right now, Florida. Hey, let's face reality. We're the best in the SEC. I know when you look at Kentucky, they're eight and two, they're nine and one, but they are sending a message loud and clear that they are the best team in the conference. And you saw the right foot, even though it was a blue shoe on the blue line, stepping out of bounds, and that is turnover number 14 for Kentucky. You know, I even think the judges would have been it's a subpar year when you look at the SEC in terms of strength. I mean, you've been around the SEC. I think you agree. Yes, I would. The guys in the white jerseys are the cream of the crop right now in this conference. Improving it tonight. Every day against 
the likes of Michigan, Michigan State, Indiana, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Nice baseline move by Colley Stein off the glass. Oh, he's got We're a halfway through the half. He's got a world potential because you can't teach seven feet of Jordan. He picks up Kenny Boynton. Boynton just two field goals tonight for leading scorer for Florida, but they haven't needed him. They've spread it around. Murphy over Colley Stein. Really had to arch that one, and Boynton was pulled down to miss. And that's a good point you made about Boynton. Only two field goals, but he's been one second. He's still playing defense. There's a big three by Mays, his second one of this half. Out of 12. Yep. Out of the 12. Nothing like the three ball game. Excitement going. Well, what if they got it down to single digits by the next TV timeout? They'd be ecstatic, I would imagine. Still a long ways to go. And the foul is going to be on Mays. See if they're going to make that happen. They have to do it defensively. And that's the one strength they've had this year. They've played good as a defensive team. Holding people are about 38%. I'll tell you one thing. Their coach will never stop coaching on sideline. He will coach every possession. That's why he's one of three coaches to take multiple teams to undefeated records in conference play. Frank McGuire did it. He's a phenomenal coach. South Jerry Tarkanian did it. Yeah, Jerry Tarkanian. Talk about teams that played hard. You watched the running Rebels when he was coaching. Took Long Beach State undefeated in their conference as well. Dating back to his conference USA days, Cal's won seven conference rounds straight, including last year's regular season championship. Vandy won the tournament title last year. And Kentucky comes up with a turnover. No foul. Noel backs away. Crowd didn't like it. Wiltshire on the other end. This would be a big, big hoop if they hit one here. Good one. Way off the mark. But Poitras is there. And he missed in close. Good one again. That good one really struggles shooting from the perimeter. And an offensive foul as well. Great effort by the Kentucky kids. But to not finalize, Poitras should have scored right down there on that layup. You got to go up strong with that basket. Four fouls on Goodwin. Got to take that ball to the basket really strong. So the lead stays at 12. Fifth offensive foul against Kentucky. Tell you one thing, they're playing hard now. That's a because John Calipari will not allow anything else. But they just don't have flow and rhythm. And it all starts college basketball, any level, starts with good perimeter play. Boynton, long three. Not sure that was the shot that Billy Donovan would have won. Two shot that from Jacksonville. <laughs> good possession. Right? He's a big possession. A big possession. Can get it to 10 or 9. A nice for the five. Won't you open for a three? Oh, oh bad pass. Back back big job by Rosario to play a lane. And oh, Noel hit. His left knee uh -oh. on the basket brace uh -oh. as he blocked that shot, and that did not look good. What a great job of hustling by New Orleans. I mean, he hustled and hustled to get back, took away the layup. Let's hope the kid is okay. In watching it in live action in full speed, it looked like he sort of hyperextended it backward when he hit that SEC pad right behind Rosario, who was on the break. And boy, with this ruin Kentucky's season this is this is the reason or a big reason they are eight and two in conference play well, he's such a difference maker defensively what he does to teams psychologically he has them really really think about them all the time here's Rosario on the break now and watch Nerlens go up with a left hand block the shot and then on landing there came the foot and then well the knee went right in behind Rosario into the pad and they continue to work on him down on the baseline. He has a real good personality, too. Good kid. I spoke to him before the game. And in a lot of pain right now. And I think everybody, even the Florida fans, Dick, right now are sort of holding their breath. The Rowdy Reptiles are not even making any noise. They know how big a... Uh, how big a plus he is to the Kentucky team. Well, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt. I mean, really, uh, really a sad situation if he's seriously injured for all the Kentucky faithful and people that have hope because he's a vital part, vital part of their whole scheme on a defensive end.
they've made a run here now to the eight minute mark and we said if they could get it down to double uh, figures or, or maybe nine and they had a couple chances down there and they let them get away. Yeah they had a few opportunities and a couple plays really didn't come up because they didn't have good guard play and I can't emphasize that enough if you're going to win in college you take a look at all the teams that win. I mean, look at Michigan. Michigan has the best guard combination in the game when you look at Burke and Hardaway. You then go down and you look at Indiana. You look at all the deep on the way he's developed to become a player of the year candidate. He's a wing player, can play some guard with Halls and certainly with Farrell. You take a look at every team that's up there, they're strong on the perimeter. Nerland's Noel again still on the floor. Kentucky in the midst of a 7 2 run, as we'll give you another. Look at it. This is going to be from a different angle, and you might see when he lands that the knee sort of comes backwards, and he immediately tried to put the brakes on. They're trying to get him on his feet right now, and the Odom crowd giving him a standing ovation. And wow, this is uh, not a good look. The left knee of Nerlens Noel, and he's going straight to the locker room, and he is putting absolutely no pressure on that leg. And they're going to carry him in. Oh, what a sight! Looking at a young guy that's projected by all the scouting reports, basically the number one player in the NBA draft. It's open play. It's not as bad as it looks. And you can see most of the team going out there halfway to the hallway, and they realize they've got a game to play, and they have to drop off their superstar freshman right there and let the trainers and the rest of the Kentucky folks take over to get him to the locker room. Nice right now, he ship. cannot put any pressure on that left leg. Nice sportsmanship by the Gator fans here. Really a nice job on them cheering in a very positive way for the young guy. I'll tell you what now, as you've been a coach, what do you do when you're John Calipari, when you got those guys wrapped around you and you're still within striking distance with eight minutes to go, but you know that your best player, at least your best defensive player, is gone? Well, you just got to maybe say to yourself, he got in foul trouble, he's on the sideline, and you got to re regroup with Willie Coley Stein's going to step up and play really big. You know, we're not doctors, so we can't speculate no. on his injury at all. Exactly. But you're right, it did not look good at all. If we get any word, we will certainly pass it along to you. And Shannon will try to find out what she can, but uh, we know one thing, his night is done as he heads to the locker room. See, right now you got to really step up defensively. Give help to one another, communicate. That's vital too. You gotta communicate with one another. Florida kids do that really well. The game just close enough that Florida can't just sit on it. Wilbekin on the drive and he scores. He gets to the basket too easily. There's no way in the world he should beat you to the rim that easily. You gotta have pride to stay in front of him. Like Aaron Kraft does that here on Ohio State. He's not gonna let you get to the rim on him. baseline and the kick out for a three short and Cauley Stein had position on the inside and he was fouled as we had to break with 716 remaining 59 to 45 Kentucky without their superstar freshman in the locker room spirited mood right now but moments ago they weren't because they showed their sportsmanship when Nerlens Noel went to the locker room with a knee injury. We don't know the severity. 7-16 remaining in a 14-point game. And Kentucky's got a big hole to try to dig out of without their best defensive player. And two reasons that John Calipari was concerned about. Turning the ball over. Well, they've turned it over 16 times. And the other factor, the threes. It was that one sequence where they knocked down about four threes in the first half. Gave them such momentum to the Gators. Goodwin playing with four fouls, remember. Wiltshire Mays, the best three-point shooters on the floor for Kentucky. Poitras runs into traffic and just gives it up. And now Patrick Young throws it out to Rosario. And he'll wisely bring it back on top. Smart play, good basketball IQ by Rosario. Played for Bob Hurley. One of the great coaches on the scholastic level at St. Anthony's. In Jersey City. 6.45 to go. See how the news managed the ball, managed the clock, good shots. Wilbekin going to take a long three over Holly Stein. Young, who's been a warrior tonight, almost came up with the loose ball rebound, or did he? 
I like that definition of warrior. He has been. And I'll tell you one thing else. He loves setting the big screen. You can see the smile on his face when he puts that body on people. And he's getting the crowd of the end zone into it as well. Odom 11 and 0 for the Gators trying to make it 12 and 0 at home. Trying to end the five game losing streak to Kentucky. Kentucky has won the last five on the John Calabar. Kentucky 7 and 1 here against Billy D. Wilshire's not been able to get loose for much outside scoring. Can't create space for a shot. Tries a hook shot and Young blocks it out of bounds. That's a problem. Cannot create space. What Kentucky lacks is a legitimate penetrator like a woman kid who can get in the lane and drive and draw and dish the rock to open people. Because we have a penetrator that so creates open shots because people have to give a help on them. They don't have that. You never see that in their whole offensive set. Not only did Young block that shot, it was last touch by Wilter, so a block shot for Young. Another turnover for Kentucky, and with six minutes and change remaining, still down 14. Florida playing well under control. And they've had that in the past with guys like Teague and Knight and John Wall. And they're going to have it again next year with the Harrison kids. Trust me, they are legit. Ten on the shot clock, Murphy all alone. Nice Just feed by Brady. Great job of patience and poise offensively. Tremendous team unity, looking for the open man, cutting without the ball. Five Gators and double figures, Dick. And Polly Stein and it blocked inside. This great team defense, team offense, and the Roddy Reptiles love their Gators. Don't often see a seven-footer going for a stuff, having it rejected, but that one was. You know, you're looking at the eye test. Florida is by far the best basketball team in the conference. Now five minutes to play. Ten on the shot clock. Rosario Prather lines up. Now penetrates instead of taking the outside jumper, and he scores anyway. He's a big time performer off the bat. He's a roll aid specialist, Mr. Nestle. He's a roll aid specialist. He gives you instant productivity. He's two points off his career high with 12 tonight. He helps to relieve that little eight that Coach may have. <laughs> I'm telling you, but it gets a bail on South there for Mr. Calipari. As I know, he doesn't feel good. He works too hard. There's such pride and passion. John is just sitting with his arms folded and watching him play right now. They're not playing very well. Wiltshire, loose ball, scores. Came up with a loose ball. That was something. Look at this. Look at this. Beats everybody to the hole. That's embarrassing. That's absolutely embarrassing that nobody gets back defensively. He's frustrated with that and upset. He's going to make a substitution. He'll bring in Paulson into his backcourt just for some hustle. You got to get back. You got to play defense. You got to get back. Mays missed a three. Three there with a rebound. Nice position. You can understand the shots. You can understand turning the ball over. But it's unacceptable not to hustle back. I miss coaching. I want to get back coaching. I want to get back coaching. Do the job. I'm going to have you get me a job. I want to get back coaching. You got an opening for you. You do? Important. He's fouled on the way to the basket. He'll go to the free throw line when we come back. 3.33. Remaining. All Florida. The SEC on ESPN. They're going to be perfect at the O-Dome. It'll be 12-0 when this one's over. Hey, you know Pat Hayden. Pull him up. I want the Southern Cal job. <laughs> I want the Southern Cal job. Come on, run. Three remaining in the ball game. Nick Vitale, if you want a coaching oh. job, you're going to oh. have to learn to dress oh. just a little bit better because Where'd we take you, you back. As we take you back, that's a, that's a nice leisure suit. I don't know about the check pants. I'm just not sure about that, but I do like the matching collar. And the short shorts does accentuate your lovely games. And speaking of lovely, there's Lorraine and Terry and Sherry. Where did you get those pictures? Hey, man. We, oh, we take care wow. of those here on Tuesday night. Super Tuesday. Wow. Terry and so anyway, Sherry. improve your look. And you got a shot of going back to coaching. Well, my son was in the house here today. George Hall of Fame. Fruit. Hall of Famer. Okay. Soon to be a Hall of Famer. And the Sportscasters Hall of Fame, too. Congratulations. That's really nice of you, Brad. Certainly, uh, Hall of Famer, as I said at the time, I'm not a... 
I'm just a jock man who gave me a microphone. Real broadcasters and guys like Dan Schumann, yourself, Mike Tirico, Brent Musburger. You guys are the broadcasters. I'm a jock man. They hand me the mic and they said, talk about a game you love. And I've been doing it for 34 years. All right, little two man play. Holy Stein. They're going to need a lot of Holy Stein, depending on the outcome of. What's happened to Nerlens Noel? If you missed it, went out with a knee injury a few minutes ago. Was helped to the locker room, been putting pressure on the knee. We're going to get a report from what Shannon has slurred as soon as we get a break in the action here. I'm going to see some Gator fans to get this question. Who is the single season record holder and most points in the season? Best average in the season? Yes, he's in the house tonight with my son in Chief Judge Andy Owens at Sarasota. That would be a hard one to get in the trivia question. That's a shot clock violation as uh, Murphy missed everything. Played here in 1970, 69. The second pick of the draft was a guy named Ned Walk. Remember that name? Yeah. And number one was a guy named Lou Alcinda, uh -huh. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, guys, I just checked in with the Kentucky SID, and I was told there was no update on Nerland's Noel at this point. But just to let you know, I also checked in with the Florida Gators, and they do not have an x-ray facility on site here at the O-Dome. So if any x-rays are needed, then Noel will have to be taken to the hospital that is actually on site here on the campus, but it will not be done here at the O-Dome. Tell you what, thanks, Shannon. We are crossing our fingers, as I think all of college basketball is, and obviously the Wildcats, the big blue nation is, and that Noel is going to be okay. By the way, everybody, if nobody wants to see it, we get hurt. Another block on the inside, either Murphy or Young got a hold of that shot by John Hood. And now it's just a matter of time for the Gators to assure their fans that they are going to have a two-game lead in the SEC atop the standings. You know, Florida became a better team when they shifted Wubikin to the point guard slot, but pointing at the two-guard slot. Rosario missed. Kali Stein clears off for under two minutes. Wiltshire's really not been a factor tonight. Let's have seven points. Can't get open looks. Uh -huh. Can't get open looks. Colley Stein trying to go to work. He's, he's got ten. He's showing some ability. He really is. The last two games, I've won the game. He's got some good mobility, good attitude. Patrick Young, I think, took one in the midsection there, trying to block that last shot. And uh, he's still got a smile on his face, Howard, as he comes over. Rivalry week presented by Wendy's. Wednesday night hoops. The Orange look to stay in the hunt for another Big East title. Road test against the Huskies. Then Tobacco Road. Dick will be there. It's Duke and Carolina. The annual battle. It's all coming up tomorrow night. 7 o'clock. Syracuse, UConn, and North Carolina Duke at 9. You can watch it on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. I'll be joining the likes of Dan and Mr. Schumann and Jay Billis and Janine Edwards. We'll be down there. I don't care what everybody says. That's the best rivalry in all the college sports. Can't compare. I don't care what records are. Number 95. When Duke was 0-7 in conference play, they went to 102 to 100 and double overtime. Ten on the shot clock. Wilbekin spins and takes it over hood. Just a shot. Now we'll get the rebound with a minute to go. I got a trivia question for you. Uh -oh. With this five-game winning streak that's about to go by the board for Kentucky, who has the longest winning streak in the SEC right now? The Georgia Bulldogs play oh, Alabama on ESPNU, and uh, they might be tipping right now. You know, Mark Fox has done a good job at that club in the way they started this year. I really like him. He's been short-handed in personnel, but if you talk to him, he knows basketball. The Dogs have people. won five straight, six of their last seven. Again, that game's on ESPNU starting in about a minute, I think, in Athens. You also have been a good for him. Yep. Martin has played some sports. Driving to the goal. Got my buddy in the house with me. I'll learn a little bit about tennis tonight. I'm head back to Sarasota. Go my buddy Nick Bollettieri. He knows about as much about tennis as anybody in the world. He's coach he? 10 number ones. Coach 10 number ones. Well, you got to get home and get some rest because Duke and Carolina await tomorrow night. You don't need rest for that one. You train yourself when you're walking to the arena. Cameron Indoor Stadium, you will walk in. I think you better get on that plane and. Get a little bit of honey and uh, tea and lemon. Ready to go. Second straight games that uh, the Gators have had five guys in double figures. That's great balance. They got terrific balance. I like that team. I really do. When you measure them, 
with the top teams in the country. As you said earlier, there's so many potential teams that can win the national title, and they're in that hunt. They have two things going for them. They defend really well, and they have solid guard play. Kurtz with the foul with 20.6 to go. Got to with an excellent night running the show and the floor and finishing with 14 points. You better practice, though. You got to practice, Scotty. You got to practice. Your name's not Allen Iverson. Rosario had 12. I mentioned all five guys, five of the guys in double figures. You know what Billy Donovan has done so well here at the school? He embraced football. He knew that football was the king and brings in so much revenue-wise, but he embraced it and utilized it as a positive for recruiting. I mean, this campus jumps. He's coming in for a football weekend. It's a positive. So well, many places they make it like it's, a, it's, it's an enemy instead of being your friend. I'll tell you what, it's been friendly to the basketball fans because this is the 20th win again for Billy Donovan. That is 15 straight years as Gators have won that many, and he and John Calipari are already meeting at midcourt. It was all Florida. It was four to nothing at the beginning. Kentucky, the rest was Gator night. 69 to 52 is the final. And the Gators go by themselves to the head of the class where they were two hours ago, but now they've got themselves a little bit of breathing room. 20 and three on the year, 10 and one in the SEC as Kentucky falls to eight and three. And we go to Shannon. Coach, you told me the real test for your players would come after this game, how they respond to a win or a loss. What will you say to them tonight? Well, we did a great job. You know, first and foremost, I was proud of the way our guys played and competed. You know, they're a good team. I certainly hope, uh, you know, Nerlens Noel is okay. I didn't quite see what happened down at our end there, but he went into the stanchion. So I hope for Kentucky's sake he's okay. But I, our guys played. We did a really good job in the game. And, you know, it's only one game. And, and right now we've still got a lot more of the league to play. And, you know, you don't get any more bonus points for getting a win. you got to move to the next one. So, you know, we'll have a very tough challenge on Saturday against Auburn. And we've got to be able to move past this and get prepared for them. We spoke about the adversity that your team went through this past week. What was the value of that experience? Well, I just don't think as a team you can ever really reach your fullest potential unless you have your fair share of adversity. Because at some point in time in a the season, there's going to be difficulties that are going to come. And you've got to learn how to respond to them and deal with them and overcome and persevere. And certainly for us from an injury standpoint, we've had to deal with some of that this year. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Brad? Well, five guys in double figures. Kenny Boynton, the only one that wasn't with nine. And a 69 to 52 resounding win for Florida. They stay perfect at home, 12 and 0 at the O'Dome. Stay tuned. Michigan and Michigan State coming up right now for Shannon Spake and Dick Vitale. Brad Nessler saying so long from Gainesville. We head back to our college basketball studios for an update. And here's Steve Wiseman. Steve.